in health class, we learn to eat our vegetables, get eight hours of sleep every night, exercise, don't drink alcohol or do drugs, and don't have sex because you will get pregnant and die. But what we didn't learn about is about our emotions, mental disorders, healthy coping skills, and how to communicate. Believe it or not, I was a teenager once, and I remember having emotions without names and not knowing how to explain them. It's frustrating. Everyone around me seemed so normal, but there I was drowning and constantly feeling just, ugh. I wanted to be carefree too, and the only time that I felt that way was when I was drinking. It was the only time words came a little easier, and my chest didn't feel tight, my face wasn't hot, and people looked directly at me. So one day before school, I had the bright idea to drink throughout the day. I wanted to feel better for once. I wanted a day to feel like I wasn't suffocating. So I was drunk by 9 o'clock and suspended from school by 10. My mom was so mad and she kept asking me why and I didn't know how to explain how I was feeling. So I did what I saw at home. I lashed out, I yelled, I screamed, I got mad. She hit me and I jumped out of the car. She ripped my favorite shirt trying to grab me and then she sped off. I had $40 a pack of gum on me and I just walked about an hour into walking I realized there's no way I was gonna make it to Ohio with $40 and a pack of gum wearing flip-flops and also I knew I wasn't going to go home because I knew the wrath that was waiting for me on my front step so I ended up walking to my old youth pastor's house and I waited for her to get home. When she got there, she fed me. She listened to me rant and rave about everything going on. I severed up. She let me call my best friend before taking me home. And the most important thing that she did was listen to me. With no judgment, she just listened and told me that I needed to be honest with my mom about how I was feeling. Of course, I'm like, uh, she doesn't listen to me. There's no point. But when we pulled up at my house, my mom was sitting on the front porch smoking a cigarette and I wanted to just run away all over again but she really surprised me she said that we should take a walk that was the first time that me and her were completely open and honest with each other and it made such a difference after that moment we just that was exactly what I needed but it only took me getting suspended from school for drinking for her to realize that I wasn't okay and that I needed her Although that was a low point in my life, it was also one of the best. I found out I wasn't alone, I wasn't crazy or stupid, but I actually had a mental disorder. And there's just something that, about being able to label your disorder that's comforting. And one of my biggest things was I always wondered how things would have turned out if we had a health class that talked more about physical health, that talked more than physical health, but actually talked about mental health as well to learn about mental disorders, what they are, their symptoms, coping mechanisms, and resources that we could do. I feel like doing that would help remove misconceptions and stigmas surrounding mental health and let kids know that mental disorders are common and there's nothing to be ashamed of. I feel like the purpose of informing kids about information is not to have students disclose personal information or in-person solicitation because I'm not saying everyone needs therapy. I'm not saying everyone has a mental disorder. Instead, we're informing kids about the different types of mental and behavioral disorders and the resources that are available. So they can decide for themselves if they need extra help or if they want someone to talk to instead of feeling so alone all the time. One of my favorite quotes is by Janet Lansbury. It says, in my world, there are no bad kids, just impressionable, conflicted young people wrestling with emotions and impulses trying to communicate their feelings and needs the only way they know how. I mean, that's, you know, what kids are going to do when they don't know they're going to communicate in the only language and the only way that they've seen before. So according to the American Counselor Association, the maximum recommend recommended ratio students to student counselors is 250 to 1. The average ratio of the U.S. high school's student per counselor is 476 to 1. And right now, most school counselors are flooded with academic counseling and they don't have time to talk to each student. But in a class format, 
I feel like they'll be able to reach out to everyone without feeling, no one feeling isolated. Gym teachers can teach physical health, so I can't school counselors teach about mental health. One in six U.S. youth aged 6 to 17 experience a mental health disorder each year. 50% of all lifetime mental illnesses begin by the age of 14 and 75% by the age of 24. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 34. The average delay between onset of mental health symptoms and treatment is 11 years. Can you imagine having the tools to get through hard times in your life and not having shame to ask for assistance instead of putting it off due to being labeled or judged? Many health behaviors and habits are established in adolescence that will carry over into adult years. So it's so important for the youth to have good mental health and be able to develop that. So I'm going to end it with this quote by Frederick Douglass. It's easier to grow strong children than to repair broken adults. Thank you.